most what, of what we call introversion is literally social anxiety, okay? So those of you who, for example, would be nervous speaking to a large group of people, very common reaction, humans grow up evolutionarily. Most of our ancestors lived in small groups. It's called Dunbar's number. Robin Dunbar, the sociologist, 150 person groups. So of course the average human is petrified to speak to 10,000 people because in our evolutionary past, there was never, and I repeat, never a crowd of 10,000 people. It's very unnatural to have crowds of 10. I've spoke, the largest group I spoke to is about 30,000 people in a stadium. Um, that never happened. In the 1500s, the average person never, there's a good book called Guns, Germs, and Steel. The average person never traveled more than 15 miles from their home. Guns, Germs, and Steel, he's a Pulitzer Prize winning UCLA professor. I, I actually interviewed him for his book um, for MentorBox, a company I own. So I've, I've had pretty interesting conversations with him. Um, and so you can't naturally be good at speaking to large crowds. Out of this group, let's say we had a thousand people on the Zoom call, there'd be under 5% who are naturally good speaking to large groups. It's not in our genes, okay? It's really not. And if you think you're a good speaker, the simple test is, can you speak to 10,000 people and get a standing ovation 80% of the time? Then you're a good speaker. Now, what I was telling to this guy earlier today he was too much diagnosing himself. He was saying, Ty, I'm an over, I'm a introvert. I have, you know, imposter syndrome. I said, no, 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 stop it. You don't, you don't have, you're not really an introvert. Okay. Not by Jung's definition. And you're not really experiencing imposter syndrome. You just aren't that good at it because you don't practice. So when I lived at the Amish for two and a half years, the Amish would have a barn raising and they'd build a house. And they would build a house so fast, it's pretty amazing. There's documentaries on the Amish in the United States, how they can build a barn in one day. Well, the reason is, is they have like 30,000 hours building barns by the time they're 18 years old. Because when you're at the Amish, you start picking up a hammer at five years old. And they don't have imposter syndrome or they're not introverts. When you show up, to, I just did one this year in the last year. There was a, um, I have a farm in the middle of an Amish community and they were doing, they call it a work day. It's in German, right? They call it Schaffa. Schaffa is the Amish German word for work. So they have these Schaff days, work days. And when you get there, there's nobody who's like, yo, I'm an introvert. I can't build this house. I'm a little nervous. There's no panic attacks. Nobody says, oh, I have imposter syndrome. I read that in a book. Imposter syndrome is where you doubt your own skills or more sophisticated terms, Dunning-Kruger's. None of that. They all been building houses. They all have 10,000 hours in by the time they're 18. And so your competence is your confidence. And we live in a world now where people are like, I don't feel confident. I, I That's good. You, you shouldn't feel confident. Confidence brings confidence. And what brings competence? Reps and sets. Arnold Schwarzenegger is one of the great biographies. It's on my tylopez.com slash books. Okay. I recommend it in my top. I'll put the link if you ever want to see my free book recommendation list. I just added a new book to it. Number 50 out of, I've, I've ranked my hundred top books added a new book called The Fabric of Reality. But in there, Arnold Schwarzenegger has his autobiography. It's called, uh, oh, he has a new one. I'm confusing. What's the one? Somebody help me out. The, the uh, I just call it the Arnold Schwarzenegger <laughs> autobiography. I'll remember in a second. He says in that book, yeah, Total Recall. Thank you. I was about to call it Terminator. Total Recall. You know, he just says, he wasn't an introvert in the gym. He wasn't an extrovert. He didn't struggle with low self-esteem. He just went like this a lot with heavier and heavier weights. And he would do about, you know, let's just say 10 sets on his chest. Uh, More, sorry. 20 sets. I think he used to say like 20 to 30 sets 
on a body part in one day and about, let's say about 10 reps. And so if you do that, okay, if you do that, you get a big chest. It pretty much, unless you have physical handicaps or you don't sleep or don't eat in general, if you go like this, my dad was a pro bodybuilder. My dad was on the cover of Mr. Universe. Um, my dad was Mr. Canada, Mr. Junior USA, Mr. Puerto Rico. He had the world re record bench press. This is before I was born. I found, I posted on my Instagram. I found him. My dad didn't brag a lot. When he died, I found in a closet his Mr. Universe magazine. Joe Weider's Mr. Universe. My dad and another guy was on the cover. It's cool. But my dad was born and had a uh, scarlet fever in his heart. So he had heart problems. The doctor told my grandmother, his parents, that he'll be dead at age 14. And so my, the old school way doctors would not let you exercise because my dad had a weak heart. So he's a very sick kid. My dad grew up in Harlem, New York, rough area. He was bullied a lot. And then around age 12, 13, 14, he stumbled. He decided to ignore the doctors. He found some books by like Jack LaLanne on bodybuilding. And my dad started to just lift weights. He didn't listen to anybody that said he had genetic weaknesses and he just ignored it and he put in the work and he went like this. My dad had a huge chest. He was strong. I told you for his weight at one year, he had the world. This is before steroids. He had the world record. He benched about 400 pounds when he was 150. That's a lot. Okay. With no steroids. And how do you do it? He just ignored all the psychology and the genetics and the this. And he just said, I'm going to go like this. And every, and every week I put a little more weight on at another pound and slowly, but surely the muscle just builds. It's called hypertrophy. And it works for almost everybody. Even somebody like my father who was told he'd be dead at 14. And by age, age 16 or 17, my dad won Mr. Junior USA. That's like, the, that was like a teenager thing. I, I've posted a few times on Instagram, my dad's pictures. And so a lot of you are overdiagnosing yourself. Okay. You're overdiagnosing yourself. You, you, you're, you're going, it's all, it's all, you understand. I got to build a personal brand, but I don't like my face. I got an introvert. You know, I did my self diagnosis. <laughs> Who's ever heard this bullshit? Uh, I'm an introvert. When I'm out in large crowds, I have to go back quietly and recharge my social batteries. I mean, I, who made this up, man? What is this? This is this. You know, all humans have to recharge a social battery. You'll never meet somebody who can be in large crowds forever. It doesn't exist in our ancestral past. The largest city, you know, there's been 100 billion humans estimated to live. A lot of you will be surprised by that, but Google it. Estimated humans on earth was 100 billion humans. Most humans lived in pre-industrial times. There was never large crowds there's no human acclimated to being in New York City all the time. Everybody, now, some people have social anxiety, but that's a separate diagnosis. And obviously, there are people on an extroverted, introverted scale that are more one way or another. 